Well, I'm, my name's uh, Peter Marshall, and I live here in Devon in the west country of, of England. And uh, I grew up on the south coast, a stone's throw from the sea, in Bognor Regis in Sussex. And uh, that's that. My experience of the sea always gave me a sense of freedom and relaxation, as it still does, and as does the natural world. Uh, and uh, I had a very loving family, which I grew up in. I, my father uh, left when I was about two, so I never knew my, my uh, father until later in life. So I didn't have a heavy authoritarian figure on my back. So I think in that sense I was uh, fortunate. And I grew up with my brother and my mother and uh, grandparents in a very loving home and, um, and, and a lot of freedom uh, to come and go as we wished. And then, uh, I, when I was about 11, I was sent off to boarding school. And this was, was the first time when I experienced a sort of organised um, cruelty and <laughs> tyranny with a very strict hierarchy between the years and the older uh, students had a complete licence to, to um, beat and um, those below them. Uh, and, and also the, the, uh, the children were encouraged to be not very pleasant to each other. Uh, so I think that, that was, came as a shock to begin with, but I survived. And, uh, and then when I became a dormitory captain, I always refused to beat anybody. And I thought you could actually uh, um, encourage people through persuasion and example, as I still do. And uh, after school, I was um, a bit encouraged by an uncle to uh, go into a profession, such as estate agency or accountancy or the law, which seemed to be the uh, sort of kiss of death at the time, and uh, I wanted to get away from the sort of stifling atmosphere of this small provincial seaside town, although I loved the sea. I decided to go to sea, but there again I encountered another hierarchy um, in the Merchant Navy, uh, and after uh, I was also working as a cadet, first a cadet on um, big passenger ships. I also learned also the emptiness of the, of the super rich, and had no wish to to go round and round the world living this uh, empty life and, uh, and resigned and went off and taught English in Africa for a year. So that's a little bit of my background. Uh, but certainly being at boarding school and being in the, na in the Merchant Navy uh, um, gave me a strong sense that I wanted to live a, a free life and that hierarchies um, and domination was not the way to treat people. And I came back to, to England, that was in the 60s. I was fortunate, by the way, when I was going around the world then, uh, to, to land in San Francisco, just in 66, just the beginning of, well, just as the, the whole counterculture movement was moving. And I went down to the city bookshop and met the Ferenghetti, the big poets. So I loved, loved jazz and sort of learning as much. So there's a whole atmosphere there, it was very, very different to this rather rigid shipboard life and came back to England, decided to try and get myself a degree in English and French and, and Spanish. Uh, and then uh, I was caught up in, the, in the, uh, that period of, um, of contestation, of pro protestation, contestation as they say in France. And the, uh, there was a period of the new left, which were calling for workers' control and decentralization of power, participatory democracy. And then the counterculture, with its, you know, its, its celebration of solidarity and individuality, and also uh, play and, and joy, flower power. So that all influenced me, and I was, got involved in the CND against nuclear disarmament and uh, um, demonstrations to end uh, U.S. aggression in Vietnam. And uh, at that time, I was already becoming a socialist. I already was a socialist, and uh, I'd gone to. Uh, before I went to sea, I used to go to uh, in Hyde Park in London. There was a speaker's corner where anyone could get up on a, a soapbox and uh, say what they thought about society. And so I was moving towards socialism then. And, and uh, I, there was two books really. But the atmosphere in the 60s in London, and and two books which brought me more directly to, to anarchism. And one was was. Um, Oscar Wilde, who wrote a book called The Essay, The Soul of Man Under Socialism, in which he says that the best society for an artist is without government. 
and that only and true individuality can only exist in uh, um, uh, in a society where there's an equality of of, of, of property. Uh, he, and he also stresses in his, in his way that disobedience was 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 humanity's first uh, virtue, and so that appealed to me. That sense of stress on the individuality. And there was also a very good pamphlet by Nicholas Walter called About Anarchism, which uh, brought up the different historical strands of anarchism and made a very good case uh, for uh, libertarian socialism, anarchism. And and really from there I then you know continued an interest in the subject. And when I um, I did research, that I chose to do it within an anarchism. I wrote a, a thesis, an MA thesis on the the anarcho-communists in France at the end of the 19th century, and uh, became very interested in William Godwin, who um, I consider a, a, the father of, of anarchism. He lived at the time of the uh, uh, French Revolution. Although the French uh, philosopher um, uh, Proudhon was the first to call himself self-consciously an anarchist in the middle of the 19th century, Godwin, um, 50 years earlier, uh, wrote uh, his inquiry concerning political justice, which gave a great um, uh, demonstration of, of its importance. And he he uh, looked forward to the auspicious time uh, with the dissolution of of that brute engine of government, which he considered to be the perennial cause of the vices of, of humanity. And he was also uh, his companion was Murray Wollstonecraft, who was uh, wrote a vindication of the rights of women. Uh, many perceived the, as one of the first feminists. So we had feminism and anarchism coming together with that period. Um, and, and then I went on to, uh, to do work. I wrote a book on Godwin, William Godwin, which was based on my, on my, on my PhD thesis on his philosophy. That was my first book I had published. And uh, while I was completing that, I was uh, got involved in a commune in... Uh, in, in uh, in the, in the country um, in central England called Redfield, which was based on libertarian um, and voluntary principles and still is uh, going on after 30 years uh, and with 20 children and 20 adults and also everything was organised through consensus and that, that was a great experiment um, and we also tried to live simply close to the land but I also at the same time wanted to continue writing and, and decided to go out to finish my first book on Godwin in Wales, in, in a remote cottage in Wales, for the winter, and then with, with my new daughter and um, companion, and eventually ended up 21 years there. So, um, and then I managed to live by writing, as I still do, and I've come down to Devon, and uh, fortunate to have, have a few acres here, which I uh, try and work in a, to maximise the biodiversity and with minimum harm and trying to live off the land as much as I can with my companion.